Welcome back to Plants Not Plastic. I'm Nikita and today we're making an easy, flavorful mushroom risotto two different ways. Risotto is one of those recipes that I think people avoid making because it's considered difficult. In coming up with this recipe though, I've learned there are quite a few misconceptions around the dish that I think scare people off from even trying. So today we're tackling a traditional stovetop and an instant pot method for this risotto. Here's everything you'll need to make this recipe. I'll also leave everything in the description box below along with a link to the blog post with some starch filled photos and a printable recipe card. All right, so the instant pot method is easier and I honestly wouldn't recommend stovetop unless you don't have an instant pot or a pressure cooker or you're trying to impress someone. I know there are people out there who will say that the instant pot is just not the right way to make risotto, but I think they come out pretty similar and it's way less effort. That being said, we're gonna start with the stovetop first because it does have its place, but if you just want the easy method, you can go ahead and skip ahead to the instant pot. So before starting with the veggie prep, we're going to warm up our vegetable broth. You can do this stovetop, bringing it to a boil and then keeping it covered on the lowest heat, or you can just microwave it before using it. I prefer stovetop because it's just there ready to use. Then you'll wash and cut up your mushrooms however you'd prefer. Sliced, diced, cubed, however. Finely dice your celery and shallots and mince your garlic. Grab a large saute pan with a good surface area and we'll start by softening our shallots, celery, and garlic over medium heat, which should take about two to four minutes. Add the mushrooms and then cook them until their water has released and cooked off and you see that first bit of browning on the bottom of the pan. After you add the mushrooms, the bottom of the pan will start to brown a little bit more. Um, but the water will release from the mushrooms naturally and it'll deglaze the pan for you, so don't worry. Once the mushrooms water has cooked off, you'll throw in the arboreal rice and thyme. Stir and cook for an additional minute before deglazing the pan with one cup of your hot vegetable broth. Here's where you'll add in the remaining vegetable broth one cup at a time until your risotto is cooked through. So while I'm managing my risotto and given that there are some misconceptions about the difficulty of stovetop, I wanna cover all of my tips at once to make this as easy as possible for you. So one, make sure that you have a large enough pan with a good amount of surface area for the rice to actually make contact with the bottom. Two, use a hot vegetable broth. If you use a cold stock, you're gonna be cooling the risotto down every time that you add more, which is gonna slow down how it cooks and you'll be more likely to end up with crunchy or gummy rice. Three, keep some extra hot broth on hand so that you can add a little bit more if needed to make sure that your rice gets fully cooked through. Four, only toast your rice for a minute. Cooking it for longer, it can get a little bit of a, like a hard shell on the outside that will make it harder for the rice to absorb the liquid as it's cooking. Five, you're looking for a slow, gentle bubble of a simmer while you're cooking the rice so that you get a little bit of movement in the rice as the stock is reducing. Too low of a heat and cooking it for too long is gonna make it gummy, where too hot and too short could cause it to burn or your stock is gonna cook off faster than it should, which is gonna result in crunchy, undercooked rice. So that gentle bubble really is the sweet spot. Six, you do not need to constantly stir your risotto. If you have a pan with good surface area and it's set to the right heat and you have the hot stock on hand, you just need to check in on it every few minutes to make sure that nothing is sticking and to know when you're ready to add more of the broth. Okay, so after you've put in the first five cups of vegetable broth, you're gonna wanna start tasting the risotto and assessing how much more cook time and liquid is needed to get it to the end. The rice will puff up and the texture should be soft on the outside, but still slightly chewy on the inside and you'll know it's done. I might even suggest going a half cup at a time near the end so that you make sure you don't end up with too much liquid at the end and your rice is cooked through because if you have to cook that extra liquid off, it'll end up being mushy. Once it's cooked, you'll remove it from the heat and you can either serve it up immediately or save it for later. Up next, the Instant Pot. Same as with the stovetop, we want a hot vegetable broth so that the rice cooks correctly. You can do the stovetop, bringing it to a boil and reducing covered on the lowest heat or via microwave freeze. Then the veggie prep. Mushrooms, celery, charlottes, and garlic. Mm. 
Rather than cooking anything stovetop, you are going to take your Instant Pot, leave it open and set it to saute before throwing in the celery, shallots, and garlic and softening them for two to four minutes. Then you'll add your mushrooms and cook off their water until you get that first bit of browning in the bottom of the pot. You'll then add the arboreal rice and thyme, cook them down for a minute before turning the Instant Pot off and throwing a half cup of vegetable broth in to deglaze. Stir well to remove anything stuck to the bottom of the pan and then add the rest of your stock. Cover the Instant Pot and set it to manual high pressure on pressure cook for five minutes. And then you, my friend, get to walk away from your kitchen. It'll take about six to seven minutes to get up to pressure and just five minutes to cook so you can kick up your feet and wait for it to be at you from across the house. When it does, you'll grab an oven mitt and release the pressure manually right away. Careful not to burn yourself. When that pressure indicator has dropped down, you can remove the lid and then pull the inner pot out right away to prevent your risotto from cooking any longer. And then after adding salt and pepper to taste for both, we're ready to serve them up side by side for a taste test. So I'll be honest, I think they taste pretty similar. The stovetop is gonna be a bit more creamy and a bit more starchy, but I think I'd reserve this method for special occasions where I might be using the fancier, more expensive risotto rice, like, I apologize in advance for my bad Italian, carnaroli or violona nano, where the starch content is even higher than arborio and you can really taste the difference. And then deglazing my pan with a cup of Chardonnay before serving up the rest of the bottle alongside the meal for a date night or dinner party. And then I keep the Instant Pot method for regular weekday lunch or dinner occasions. However you do it, this risotto is pleasant, rich, and a great addition to your recipe arsenal. Also, while fresh will always be best with risotto, it does store great as leftovers and can be a part of your weekly meal planning. Though it probably is upsetting for a few people for me to say that I think Instant Pot is easier and not too much different from stovetop and that you can store your risotto in the fridge. For how it stacks up against an alternative, you can check out the full nutrition label on the blog that links out to Chronometer. But this recipe is going to be just like my others. When comparing it to a non-vegan or a vegan processed option, it is very likely less expensive, has more fiber, and you'll get to eat more of it for the same number of calories. So that's it for today's recipe. If you try it out, let me know in the comments. You can also subscribe to my blog for recipes right to your inbox and connect with me on social media for day-to-day -day content. Also, if there is a recipe that you'd like to see from me, let me know, or something that you've been craving and haven't found a recipe for because I am always looking for new ideas. And don't forget to subscribe, click the bell, give this video a thumbs up, and come back next time. Bye.